Robin, your friendly librarian, and I'm back with some book love, so let's chat. Welcome to my library. I think you can tell from the windows. It is evening here in Southwest Ohio, 7.03, and it is pitch black outside. Um, I tried to start filming a little bit earlier, and I went to move a bowl in the kitchen, hit the side of the cabinet, shattered glass shards everywhere. So I spent the last hour vacuuming and getting all of those glass shards that had moved all the way into the kitchen. So hopefully I have all those because that is a terrible, terrible feeling right there. But I am here. My husband went to uh, work for a little while in the shop. So it gives me a couple hours to talk to you about books. Um, I have several that I need to um, talk to you about that I finished up at the end of December after the last time I filmed. And then I have several that I finished um, here at the beginning, a couple that I'm working on, a little bit of a book haul, and then some that I have been reviewing like in my classroom. I always tell you about that. It's a high school English class, ninth grade mainly. Um, but a couple of those that I want to catch you up on. And I'm going to keep this one as short as possible. So I know I say that every time. But we really are going to. Um, also for Christmas, I'm bookish. So I got a lot of bookish gifts. And I want to show some of those to you um, in case you have someone who is bookish in your life. And you are looking for some gifts that they may enjoy being bookish as we are. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of corny. So I want to share some of those bookish gifts with you in case you have someone bookish in your life and you are looking for bookish gifts. So we'll go from there. So I honestly don't have a whole lot sitting right here um, uh, on the table to start off with, but I always start off with you telling you about the books that I've read since the last time we've been together. So give me a second. I'll clear off the table, get those on here and let's chat. And I got to let Stella out. All right. Well, let's set the mood. Um, get a little candle started. I'm already uh, drinking a fabulous drink. Let's see, our candle here, I, it's a pretty local one. I know I bought it last year at, whoops, that didn't work. I bought it last year at one of the festivals that I was at. I'm pretty sure actually that I bought it at um, this event that I'm going back to this weekend. I go every January. It is um, the Cincinnati Aquarium. They have a scrapbook event. It's a fundraiser and you know, you pay a set amount and it gets you a table at the Holiday Inn, Northern Kentucky and um, uh, meals the whole time, like dinner, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then I think lunch then on Sunday. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's where I got this. So it's tobacco bourbon. It's a soy candle. I can't, I think it says Ohio Valley is the company. I can't hardly read it because it's kind of fallen off there. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, Ohio Valley Soap Company. But I'm pretty sure that's where I bought it. So that's just kind of a coincidence. I didn't plan on doing that. But um, that's what we're going to burn today. And then we are drinking uh, 1911 mm, da, 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 Light Up the Night Cherry, Black Cherry, Hard Cider. Is that the name of the company? Light up the night with the electrifying, crisp, and slightly tart flavor of 1911 Black Cherry. I think that's the name of the company. It's really good. I have no idea um, where exactly I bought this. I think I bought it at, hmm, what's the name of that? That's like a big wine place. What is that called? I don't know. Can't think of it, but it's on the way to go visit my son. We usually stop. It's a big wine store. I don't know why the name's escaping me, but a lot of times I'll stop there and just get drinks for the weekend. My candle's having some issues here, <laughs> and it's really putting the smoke out there. What is happening? Let's try again. Um, I don't know. It'll come to me sometime during the video, and I'll just say the name, but um, I think I like to go there because they have a variety of ciders and things, and you can just kind of put them all in one thing. It's just nice. My candle is going to have issues here. And I'm telling you, like, I really like it. I've been burning it. I don't know what its problem is. Um, the other thing is I always like to see when's the last time we filmed. This says Wednesday, December 20th. Um, I don't think I got the video out until after New Year's. It's just crazy like it often is here. Um, but today is Thursday and we are at the 17th. Let me get it there. The 17th. And here in Southern Ohio, we are really thinking we might have a snow day tomorrow. 
Um, and I hope so, <laughs> because if I have a snow day, hopefully then the roads will clear off faster and then I will be able to get to my event earlier. Uh, otherwise I won't get to get there until like five o'clock after work or whatever. So we're hoping we'll see. It's not supposed to really start snowing until overnight. Um, and we've had, you know, very, very mild weather. So we'll see. We did have a two hour delay this week, which was nice. Once again, I am a teacher, public school. We like delays and snow days sometimes. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do about my candle here. What is the problem? I don't know. Maybe I need to trim the wick, but it doesn't look like it. It is one of those that has like a wooden wick and I can see it. So I don't know why it's not just continuously burning. I don't know. It has an issue, but I swear, I really do like this candle. I don't know what its problem is. Um, I am going to start off and I think it's, it's like, I always have a little transcript over here and this is probably farther down in the bookish gift section, but it's sitting here. So before I move it, I'm going to um, show it to you. So this is the Scrabble Vintage Bookshelf Edition. My friend Stephanie, co-worker, um, got this for me. So it looks like a book. You can put it on your bookshelf. Um, but when you pull it out, see how it looks like a book? It's so cool looking. It's an actual Scrabble game. Uh, it's got this nice little foldable, portable Scrabble board. It looks the same size as a regular Scrabble board. Um, score sheet, your little, th your little um, holders are in here. I'm going to have to let Stella back in. Uh, but I haven't used it yet. We have a big Scrabble board that we used over the holidays, but it's beautiful and it sits right on the shelf. So I'm excited to see if it fits on my shelf in here or in the living room, one or the other, but um, it's lovely. This is one of those book bookish gifts that um, I got that I just absolutely think is adorable and perfect for my room in here. I'm going to set it aside and go let Stella in. All right, that takes us to what have I read since the last time I talked to you? I do have a few. Um, and I also want to talk to you about my Goodreads goal from last year, what I've set my Goodreads goal for for this year, um, some that I'm currently reading, and a little bit of a book haul. But I'm really going to try, I know, but I really am going to try to keep this one a little bit shorter. Uh, I, although my views, it doesn't seem to matter how long they are. My views stay about the same no matter what. This is another bookish gift that I got. I got this one from my sister. It comes from Pippi Post. I don't know if you know Pippi Post. Um, Pippi Post dot shop or pippypost.com. You can go to either one of those two things. They do a lot of bookish um, t-shirts, sweatshirts, that sort of thing. I, I know I've ordered from them for some bookish gifts before, but this is 52 weeks of book quotes. It's a lovely color um, cover. It's a lovely cover. Uh, and then each time you open it up here, each week you have a bookish quote. Uh, I've been trying to set it on top of my Sunday shelfie, like my stack of books, my to be read list. Um, so that's my game plan. If you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you'll see that. That's my game plan for it. So far we have, if you look the right way, you can see The Whole World is a Garden by France, Francis Hodgson Burnett on my TBR, li TBR list, The Secret Garden. I've never read The Secret Garden, so that is on my list of things to do. But that was last week's quote. This week is Life is Worth Living as Long as There's a Laugh in It by Ellen Montgomery. That is Anne of Green Gables, which I absolutely love. Uh, so that'll be on this week's, I think is how it works. Um, but I'm working on it. I'm enjoying it. I'll set it right there so you can enjoy it today with me. Uh, and then let's get started on the books that I have read since the last time I talked to you. Um, several of these fall under the category of my 2023. I was finishing them up. I'm pretty sure I talked to you about most of them and told you I was reading them, but I have not put reviews out there. I didn't put reviews out there. I hadn't put reviews out there at the time, um, so I'm going to go over those now. The first one there is Agatha Christie's The Patriotic Murders. Now, this is one of those Agathas. If you know me, you know I'm reading Agatha Christie books in order, um, about 66 novels, but we're also doing the short stories and plays and stuff. We just are trying to do them chronologically, um, and we have found out that there are a number of books that she has that the books go by several different titles depending on when it was first published, when it was republished, when it was published in the UK, when it, or Britain, same thing, right? I think, ooh, please don't hate me for that if I don't know. Uh, or when it was published in the US, when it showed up in the Strand Magazine or when it turned into book form. So there are a lot of different variations, but this is The Patriotic Murders, also published as An Overdose of Death 
but I feel like we had one, yeah, we had also published as one, two, buckle my shoe. So it was kind of weird, um, hard to track that one down, but it's a beautiful vintage cover. This is one of those that says that it sold for $2.95. I'm sure I paid more than that. I bought it secondhand, but still I'm sure I paid more than that. But um, really enjoyed it as I usually do the Agathas. Let me set that one up there and recall. Um, I did like it. I didn't love this one. I should say that. I didn't love this one. I'm always glad to read Agatha. I love to read Hercule Poirot. Um, I don't know Miss Marple enough to have her have taken over as my favorite Agatha character yet. We've only read a couple of her so far. We're in like 1940, I think it is. Uh, but this is why I'm discussing it with a group and we meet on Zoom. I put the link up here or down in the notes um, if you're interested in joining us about every three weeks or so. But this is one of the perfect examples why I want to read it with a group because I liked it. I didn't love it. There weren't a ton of adaptations with this one. Um, so I didn't just, and it was at a busy time. So I'm sure that has a lot to do with it too. I didn't have as much time to like delve into all the extra stuff. Um, however, after we had our discussion, it grew on me. And then I went back and re-read re or re-listened. I can't remember which one it was, but the end of it. Um, taking into account some of the things that the other members said, and I'm like, they're right. Like, this is a really good one. I don't know why I didn't love it the first time around, but um, I think that this is one that is probably influenced by the time that Agatha is writing it. Um, we're around World War II. It has a feeling of that time. The war is mentioned. War time is mentioned, um, and it just seems to kind of change the tone of the story for me. I've been missing Hastings. We're not going to see him for a while. And I miss his telling the story. Uh, and then I also realized that this is the last time we're going to see Jap. So um, I'm pretty sure this is the last time we see Jap and I'll miss him too. Those are two characters that I really like. And I don't know why she discontinues them um, because I think they add to the story. But there's that in the books. Now, the series with David Suchet uh, Inspector Jap continues to be one of the characters and so does Hastings. So it's interesting to pay attention to how the books were adapted for the television series uh, or for particular movies and then characters that they cross over like sometimes they'll put Hastings or Inspector Jap or somebody in um, one of the adaptations when they're not actually in the book. But I like that. It's one of the reasons I want to do that deeper study in Agatha Christie. All right, so that was number 97. And last year, my goal for Goodreads was to get to 101 because the year before I got to 100 and I wanted to up it by one. So that was this. The next one that I read, I believe it's right here, yep, is this P.D. James, The Mistletoe Murder. I've read a P.D. James before, um, but these are short stories and they're seasonal. I love seasonal reads. And this one, I just absolutely love. Super, super interesting to see different mysteries like Agatha Christie and the Mistletoe Murder and Jessica Fletcher, um, how they change. I just think it's super cool um, to see how the different authors treat uh, um, a mystery. And this particular, this P.D. James, um, is very different than how Agatha sets up her, her stories. And I really appreciated it. When you first read the first one, like I'm like, this is a little slow. Like it's missing the pace of an Agatha. And it was a short story. But my gosh, the endings are so good. Uh, and in this particular one, it's the mistletoe murder and other stories. So mistletoe murder is the first one. And then the other stories are a very commonplace murder, a Boxdale inheritance, and the 12 clues of Christmas. And they are all seasonal. Um, so super good. If you have not done this particular book, those particular short stories, put it on that seasonal list. I've been telling you, I'm going to remind you seasonally what it is you should be reading. And when we get around to Christmas, I'm going to remind you, put this on your to be read list, request it from the library, go get it. It's a beautiful edition. I don't know where I picked this up. I don't see anything that tells me that, but, um, I love that I actually own this one because I will reread these short stories. Um, they're short enough for like a nightly reading, which is something I also like to do when we get into this winter time, especially over the holidays. 
Um, I really enjoy just at night going to bed a little bit early and having enough time to read a short story or just read in general. I do that all year, but especially during the winter, I go to bed a little bit earlier. Um, I enjoy uh, being able to complete an entire short story for the evening. So super good. Highly recommend it. That was number 98. Number 99 was, I don't have a copy of it. I read it on my Kindle. It was A Merry Murder at St. Bernard Cabins, Wagging Tail Mystery Number 3, Cozy Mysteries. Um, I'm not sure where I picked up this. I feel like I got it in one of the like free, uh, free booksy or maybe it was a Stuff Your Kindle Day. I'm not sure exactly where I picked this one up or why. Probably because of my YouTube group that I am a part of. I take, or I participate in, I should say. Um, uh, Beach Bum Bookworm does Killing Time with Cozy's live book chats on Sunday afternoons, sometimes. Um, and I may have heard of it during that. That's where I pick up a lot of my cozy titles. But I enjoyed it. It's a fast read. It was a holiday read. A Merry Murder at St. Bernard, St. Bernard Cabins by Cindy Bell. Um, and it was good. Uh, it was number three in the series, but you could pick up easily. I didn't need to know what came before it. Um, I won't continue the series. I didn't think it was that good. And I just read it on my Kindle. It was a pretty short one. That was number 99. Number 100 is a, is a pretty popular one. Uh, Murder on the Orient, I'm sorry, not Murder on the Orient Express. It's a play on the Murder on the Orient Express. It's Murder on the Christmas Express. It's by Alexandra Bennett, um, Benedict. Uh, this is another one that I listened to. Um, it's not a cozy mystery. Uh, and not only is it not a cozy mystery, but there are some triggering things in there. I'm not real big on telling you what those triggers are, but you might want to Google that or check out the Wikipedia before you read this if you're someone who's concerned with triggers. Uh, because there is some flashbacks to something that took place before and then a current crime that are pretty triggering, um, pretty not delicate. Uh, I don't know how else to say that because I highly recommend the book. I really liked it. I'm so glad I, I listened to it. Um, uh, however, it's heavier than a cozy. So if you're here for the cozies, this is not cozy at all. Um, but it was a bit difficult um, to get through those troubling parts. And I'm not someone who's usually bothered by those um, triggering things. However, it was enough of the story that at first, when it happened, I thought, oh, it's just going to happen and we're going to move on. Kind of like lessons in chemistry. I was not expecting that, that scene in lessons in chemistry that comes pretty quickly, pretty early on. Um, when I sat down to read the book and it took me a minute to get over it and decide to keep reading um, lessons in chemistry. And this was the same way. They introduced it. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was going to be in here. That's a little. That's a little bit much for me. I'm not sure if I can get past it. And then I just kept, I kept going for the story. The plot line is great. The Agatha um, connections are superb. It's just the traumatic event was a, was hard to read, you know? And it's what, I know this is fiction, so it's a little different. But I do always say, it's realistic. Lots of people endure traumatic events. If they can endure it, I should be able to listen to it. Even when it's in fiction, it's a part of the plot. And it comes around, like... It's an important part of the plot, right? Um, it's not something that was handled lightly or flippantly, so we're good there. So I listened to this while I was preparing for Christmas, which was perfect because it is the Christmas season in the book. And then when we were traveling afterward, it was just a nice one to have in my ear while I was traveling with other people while they slept or drove. Um, you do have to pay attention in this. It's not a light mystery. I even took some annotations, like some characters. I had to remind myself, like, who was connected to who. There are a lot of murders taking place, a lot of characters. Uh, it's complicated, but it's very rewarding. And it is especially a very rewarding holiday mystery. So I'll remind you um, that when we get to December that that will be a good holiday read. And then 101 for me was Murder, She Wrote, um, A Little Yuletide Murder. Murder, she wrote number 11. Looks like this. It's a paperback. I want to say my cousin gave me this one. Pretty sure. Um, I've been reading, picking up the, the Jessica Flesh, Fletcher books. So yes, she is a fictional character, but the books act like these are her books. 
Um, so it's Jessica Fletcher and Donald Bain. I don't even know as a librarian how they get away with the fictional author like that, but I guess it's kind of like a lemony snicket. Like he is a real person though. Jessica Fletcher is not, she is a character, but um, so good. I love this series. I have watched Jessica Fletcher like my whole life. Um, I went back a couple of years ago and started at the beginning and watched every episode all the way through all the seasons. Uh, and when it was over, I really, really missed it. So when I started picking these up and they read just like the episodes, um, I really, really enjoy this series. I highly, highly recommend it. The other thing is they have lots of seasonal ones. So even though there is an order to it, and you, it, I think it helps. I, I listened to a few and read a few and then said, okay, this is another one of those. I'm going to go back to number one. What's the first one? I don't remember what the first one is, but I'm going to go back to number one, read it, um, and then go from there. And that's what I did. And I, I'm really, really glad that I did that. Um, but highly recommend Cozy Mystery, the Jessica, Jessica Fletcher series, Murder, She Wrote series. This is a little Yuletide murder. And it is very seasonal. It plays on the season. So I've done uh, like 4th of July, I did parade, like murder on parade. Thanksgiving, I did something feast. I can't remember what that was. This is a Yuletide murder. I really, really recommend this series. I'm really enjoying it. It's very cozy. Ah, number one was uh, Gin and Daggers. Um, I've also read that Murder on Parade, A Fatal Feast, Hook and Sinker, I think. Uh, Hook, Line, and Murder, something like that. Uh, and then this one. So my next one uh, is May Manhattan and... Manhattan's in Murder, and that's later on. I'm going to do that one because I've already finished that one too. Uh, and I just went to the library to request the next one. My library doesn't have it. I don't have a copy of it. I couldn't get it on Libby, so I had to request for them to get it from a different library. So I just did that. I'm planning on doing at least one Fletcher a month. So hopefully I'll get 12 of them done. Uh, and they're so easy to do. So yeah, so then my first one for the new year was Manhattan's and Murder, Murder, She Wrote, number two. Um, okay, so I listened to this one, and I have probably talked to you about this before, but I love listening to audiobooks. Uh, audio, I love listening to audiobooks, but this one about did me in. As soon as I started it, it is not the same narrator that has done the other audiobooks in the Murder, She Wrote series um, so far, and... Oh, I, I thought I'm not going to be able to do this. This lady is so fake. She is not, she's not the same Jessica. Number one, when you're listening to the audiobooks and it's not Angela Lansbury, that's bad enough. But then to have different narrators um, being Jessica's voice, stop. Like, I don't know what your problem is, but we need to get past this. However, she grew on me. So there's something to be said for that. I have definitely DNF books that um, I'm reading or listening and I just don't like the audio version. I have DNF'd lots of books doing that. Um, but this one, I was like, oh, you know, I'm committed to doing this series. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to have to do this or I'm going to have to stop listening and go back and read the print book. And I didn't have time to do that at the beginning of the year. So I, you know, stuck with it. And she did. She really grew on me. It's She has a terrible accent. And my guess is... She may no longer be available, so hopefully she doesn't watch this video and take any offense because I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. But it was terrible. The accent was terrible. But um, I admittedly like really cheesy shows, and and so it grew on me. And I, I stuck with it, and I really, really liked it. Um, so highly recommend, again, uh, read it if you're a, you know, a print cozy person, but stick it out. If you start listening to it and you're like, oh, I don't know give it a chance. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. She grew on me. All the, all the familiar friends from Cabot Cove, um, are coming to Manhattan to Jessica's aid when she gets, you know, caught up in something. Um, I don't know how her friends realize that they shouldn't be hanging around her because everybody dies, but they all come to help her, um, in Manhattan. And, uh, definitely has that Christmas theme to it. So, even in uh, Manhattan's, <laughs> Manhattan's and Murder, you're still continuing with that Christmas theme. There you go. So there's that. Uh, the second book that I finished in the new year is Witches, When It All Began, A Witch P.I. Mystery. It's the first one by Adele Abbott. 
Uh, this was recommended to me by Wendy West. So Wendy, if you're listening, thanks for the recommend recommendation. Um, I have been trying to get this book since she told me about it at least a year ago, but my library doesn't have it. It wasn't available on Libby. Every time I went to a half price book or a bookstore, um, I looked and I could never find this. And then finally, my son bought my future daughter-in-law a Kindle for Christmas and it came with Kindle Unlimited. But because I ordered it through my Amazon account, it attached it to my account and you couldn't transfer it back over to her. So I have Kindle Unlimited for another month, I think it is, because it came with three free months. And it was available on Kindle Unlimited. So I was like, oh, immediately download and, and do that one. So I, I did that through an ebook um, and it was enjoyable. It was fun. I know it's a witch cozy mystery and it is not Halloween, but it was interesting to see how they set up the series. <clears throat> I would read more in the series. It sets up a really good backstory. I'm interested to see how they develop it. Um, it's a very quick, cozy read. That is, which is when it all began, a witch P.I. mystery. I got it from Kindle Unlimited uh, and read it on my Kindle. The third and four, I'm going to put three together. I used two short stories and then counted them as one. Um, my Agatha group decided to take um, a break from Agatha and do a, a short study on Sherlock. So um, by Arthur Conan Doyle, we did two, that was Stella, she's dropping her bone on the tile. Um, we uh, did two Sherlock short stories. We did The Red-Headed League um, from The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And we did The Adventure of the Six Napoleons, which is another Sherlock Holmes short story. So I did both of those. Um, I already showed you the books, so I'm not going to pull those back over here, but I have three or four books that have Sherlock stories in them, and I had to pick from both of those. Um, I enjoyed it. I'm lying. I'm going to go get the books because I love a visual. Give me just a sec. All right, and then even in addition to these, I forgot that I have a different um, copy of the Agatha that I was telling you about. So this one says An Overdose of Death, original title, The Patriotic Murders. Um, and again, this is that lovely vintage copy. Um, and it sold originally for $1.25. Sure, I paid more for it, but I don't have that um, marked in here. I feel like this is one that I probably got down at the book rack in Murray, Kentucky. She carries a lot of Agathas, and I just pretty much buy whatever she has whenever I'm down there. So uh, throwing that out there. All right, so the Sherlock ones that I have, I have this little beautiful little um, yellow book. It's tiny. Um, so this is like a regular classic, um, signet like classic or penguin classic. So you can kind of see the size there, but it's a lovely little size. The problem is the print is super tiny, <coughs> but this has, um, several short stories and this is where I read the red headed league. It's in here. Um, and I plan to read these other ones. So I really like that little guy. Look how cute he is. He is adorable. Um, and then I read the other one from this, Sir um, Arthur Conan Doyle, the complete Sherlock Holmes volume two, which is not complete. So Becky, one of our Agathas, she was like, I thought I had read all of the stories because I read the complete Sherlock Holmes. And then there was another complete Sherlock Holmes. So I don't know why they call it the complete Sherlock Holmes because it's not, <laughs> but this is where I found the adventure of the six Napoleons. So lots of short stories in this one too. This is obviously a much bigger tome. But I'm putting both of those on my um, my stack of like books that have the Marples or the Perros in them, and I'm reading the stories in order, uh, and I'm just going to make my way through them. So both of these I hope to finish this year just by reading a short story every once in a while. Um, I, I probably should have tilted my camera down a little bit. I apologize that it's not quite set up so that you can see the bottom there, but it is what it is. And then after we did that, um, I found this somewhere. I don't rem I don't know. I don't know where this came from. It's one of those not for resale because the covers um cut, but it is a study in scarlet. So I'm hoping to read that one this year too. So all three of these will be on my short stack um, to read this year. But I combined those, the Redheaded League and the Adventure of the Six Napoleons to count for my number three read in 2024. That being said, I met my goal for Goodreads. Um, I hope you're on Goodreads. If so, let's be friends. But I printed out like my year in books. Um, I, I don't know. I can't even express to you how much joy it gave me this year. Um, I am 51-ish. I think that's right. Um, and I've been teaching for 30 years. Most of those have been here at the school that I currently teach at, Blanchester. 
Um, and I cannot tell you the joy it gives me to see my former students who've come through the last, you know, 30 years that we've been there who are now readers and they have, they are on Goodreads and they um, are setting their own goals. And I do want to say right off the bat, I know I give you numbers, but just because it keeps me motivated, I don't care if you read one book or 101 books last year. If you read a book, if you started reading, you're a reader. And I'm just, I'm so proud. I'm so pleased um, at how many of my students put their Goodreads things on there and their year in books. And I loved clicking on them and looking and seeing like, what is it that they've been reading and how do we line up and how did their... Um, taste change for when I knew them when they were there and then until now. Lots of them are young mothers now and it's so interesting to see how their tastes have changed or not. Um, and then the other thing is not just my students but just my friends. Lots and lots of friends um, who are on Goodreads and they are setting those goals. And what I think it does is it just helps us keep focused. So, you know, it is a goal and I don't have, I don't set a goal of number of books that I want to read so that I can check off just the numbers. Like if I did that, I would just read all short books, right? But I'm not doing that. I'm reading all kinds. I'm reading short and longer, whatever. Um, but I really enjoyed seeing my year in books. So I met my Goodreads goal for last year, uh, but I highly encourage you, if you've not done it before, go visit Goodreads, join, um, and then set your goal for this year, whatever that might be. You wanna read five books, you wanna read 500 books, like whatever it is. Um, but I am taking my cousin's advice. I usually read somewhere around, you know, just depending from 40 to 80 books a year across the last like 30 years. Um, and then last year I set it, no, two years ago I set it at 100 and I made it. And then I was going to set it at 100 and again, and again, no, I didn't. I think I didn't make my goal. I can't remember. Anywho, see, that's what I mean. Like, it's not really about that. But anywho, what it does is motivates me. But um, then last year, the year before, I guess, when I was setting my one for 2023, my cousin said, oh, you should just add one. And I was like, that's a great idea. So I set it at 101 and I met my goal. So this year, my Goodreads goal is 102. The thing is, I know that's attainable for me. Might not be attainable for you. You know, my kid is now 26-ish. Um, and does not live at home. It's me and my husband. We have lots of hobbies together. We have lots of hobbies apart. So I have time now um, that I can listen to books while I'm cleaning, when I'm driving. I'm alone a lot for that. Um, I'm running around with my husband a lot, waiting in the car while he goes into Bass Pro Shop or whatever. I can have my Kindle with me. It motivates me to read in those down times and I enjoy it. I'm not just reading to meet the goal. I'm reading because I know I enjoy it. There are so many great books out there that I want to read. My TBR list is so long. Um, I want to read for work. I like to read what my students are reading. Um, currently, I'm reading Icebreaker because it's all over our high school. Um, and I know it's spicy, so I wanted to see how spicy. It's a lot spicy. I'm just saying. They should not be reading this. But you know me. Read whatever you want to as long as you read. I try to stay out of the judgment zone. But woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo, icebreakers. It's spicy. I enjoyed it. It has a great storyline. I will review it for you the next time because I'm about three quarters of the way through. But I'm telling you, do not let the cover fool you. The cover looks very calm and young adultish. It's not. The characters are in college. They are acting like college students, if not even more than that. Like, it's a lot. But I am enjoying it. I'm glad I'm reading it. Um, but that's why I want to make sure that I set those goals. So it motivates me to continue reading. And I know that there's that number that I am trying to get to so that I read in some of those, like when I have the option of sitting and watching TV, or if I have the option of just standing in line and there's no one there that I'm talking to and I'm just waiting and it's dead time, I can whip out my phone and read something, right? So there's that. All right. So those are the ones that I've done so far since the last time I've talked to you. I want to do a little bit of a book haul. I want to talk to you about some bookish gifts and then we'll see where we're at and I will um, do some of the ones that I've been recommending in my classroom or um, I've said something to you but I didn't have a good reads out there and I need to do some of those. So let me do that. Also wanted to, diminish, also wanted to mention my shirt. I'm pretty sure I've worn this in one of my videos but I'm not sure. So uh, it says I'd rather be reading. 
Um, I can't remember where I got it, so I'll put that in the notes if I can figure that out on the bottom because I really do think that I could figure that out. I want to say it's from a local vendor like ABC, ABC Books or something like that, but I'll find it and put it in the notes for you below. Um, but let me get to some of that book haul. Let me switch some things around. Give me a sec. All right, I forgot what I really wanted to make sure I got to are those seasonal reads that I told you about. So as we start January, now it might take me a little bit to get this video out because I am going away for the weekend, but um, I'll try and maybe edit something in the morning. I know I always say that and then it just takes me forever to do the editing. On the uh, Killing Time with Cozies group, a lot of those people have channels and they talk about how they have stopped editing. They just shoot and then put it out there. And I cannot do that because I have so much dead time. Like I start talking about something then I want to stop and think about it. And then I'm looking through a book. I'm moving things around. Like I cannot shoot without editing. So I don't know. The, now I say that I put a TikTok out there. So I hope you saw that if you're following me on other social media or look in the link below. But on TikTok, I um, showed my shelf. It's like right here. I showed my shelf of the books that I own that I read in 2023, kind of talked a little bit about those. Uh, I did not edit on that. So I don't even know, I guess it's just called a TikTok, I guess. Um, I was gonna do a YouTube short and I haven't added it up there, but um, it got a lot of views and it seems like people really like that too, but I'm not good with that. So there's that. All right, so uh, the seasonal ones that I wanted to tell you about. Oh, let me mention real quick, um, Stuff Your Kindle Day. I have participated in this before, but probably did a little bit more this time around. Um, if you Google Stuff Your Kindle Day, it is linked back to a Facebook group, like Romance Readers or something like that. They're the ones that started it, and then um, they're the ones that mention it, I think, the most. They'll tell you which ones on your Kindle or Amazon account that you can get to put on your Kindle for free. They do it four times a year, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll keep you um, informed on when those dates are, but you can Google it too. But the, the one that I participated in this last time was um, after Christmas, uh, 26, May, uh, maybe 27, 28, somewhere like that. Um, you could go on to Amazon, you could type in stuff your Kindle. Um, you could put in a particular genre that you were looking for. It wasn't just romance. And then you could download those books immediately, like for free, but it only was about 24 hours long. So, and they do it four times a year. So I did want to mention that just in case you are a new Kindle owner um, and you're trying to figure out how to do that. The other thing is um, I showed my students, um, I think it's called Everyday Reading. I'm pretty sure that's who did it. She did a video on how to get the books from your public library onto your Kindle. Um, she does a great how-to video, and I'll try and find that and link that one for you or put it up, up um, here. I don't know where I'm terrible about that kind of thing, but um, I'll try and put it up there for you uh, so that you know um, how to do that. If you're a new Kindle owner, once again, you do not have to buy books. You don't have to um, subscribe to Kindle Unlimited. You can just get the books from your public library for free. I'm just saying, you can. <laughs> uh, that you might have to wait on things, uh, but my to be, to be read list is so long, I am never without a book to read, so I'm good there. Uh, anywho, anywho, one of the things I really wanna do this year is help you um, think about what you might wanna read seasonally. Now, I would like to get these out prior to the season, but here we are and we're doing all we can. Um, but Let It Snow is one that I have recommended to you in the past. Um, it has short stories, John Green, Maureen Johnson, Lauren Miracle, three holiday romances. Um, so it might be one that you want to read in December, but I like that it has that cover, the um, Let It Snow. Um, and I think they're easy to recommend. They are young adult authors, three well-known young adult authors. I have read novels by each of these. Um, I don't particularly remember each of these stories. I reviewed this back in 2021, but I think I read it prior to that even. Oh, yeah, I read it back in 2009. Um, and quite frankly, I don't really remember the specifics. I know there's one where she's in a diner and some, you know, like falls in love. Stella, you've already been out. You might as well sit down. You're not going back out right now. Uh, so highly recommend that one. And then uh, the One Year Chronological Bible, I've also talked to you about this on YouTube already. Let me check that John Green one. Yeah, I thought so. I've already talked to you about John Green and being in Let It Snow. So highly recommend that one. 
the one year chronological Bible. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this to you on YouTube also, uh, but maybe I just didn't have a um, good, no, I do have a good reads out there for 2020. Um, so maybe it's that I have not mentioned it to you. Either way, um, I recommend several Bibles. I feel like I've done this before though. I like this one year chronological one. I actually bought one of these and sent it to my um, daughter-in-law uh, because she was talking about the fact that she's never read the Bible all the way through. It's really difficult. Now this is coming from someone, I've been in church my entire life. I've read the Bible several times. I try to always be reading the Bible, but I have read it like all the way through several times. Um, but I think what people think is, oh, I'm going to read the Bible all the way through this year. And they're going to start at Genesis 1 and they're going to work their way through. And that's kind of difficult to do. It might not be the best approach. I'm just saying, um, because Genesis, you know, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, until you get to like the Ruth story, um, it's not particularly narrative, which makes it a little bit difficult. So what I like about this one, um, is that it does go by the date. So if you're trying to read the Bible all the way through, it breaks it up to you so that you can stay on track, right? And it does start Genesis 1 and 1, right? You can do it that way. But it makes it so that you know where you can stop if you are trying to read it chronologically, right? So I do really like that one. And then I have a um, student Bible. I don't have it here. I feel like I gave it away is the, the kicker. But I have a student Bible. I've talked to you about that one too. It's the student Bible, um, the New International Version. Um, but I also have a copy of that in the um, in my classroom. Again, for students who are looking um, to read a little bit of the Bible and try and figure out how that fits into literature and also into their spiritual lives. So there's that one. But the other one I wanted to tell you about, let me show you, hold on, about these two. So just in case you're looking for a Bible, this is the single column journaling Bible. It's by Crossway. I bought this one when I wanted to um, do some of the Bible drawing, like illustrations. Um, I was trying to do a little bit of like uh, taking an image and putting it with whatever was on there. So I know I've talked to you about this one too, doing like some stuff like that, right? Um, and then putting some markers in some of my favorite um, verses. But the other one I got up to show you is this is my favorite. My all-time favorite is this Quest Study Bible. And I like it because if this sounds too overwhelming for you, trying to read the whole thing and having day by date starting at Genesis 1, this one has reading plans. Now, I'm sure you could find these things online, um, but they have ones like if you wanted to read every every word in the Bible and it's got a checklist. But before that, if you want to break it up and do like two weeks on the life and teachings of Jesus, two weeks on the life and, and teachings of Paul, um, you want to do an overview, you want to read from every book in the Bible, but not every word maybe, um, it has nice checklists. So I highly recommend this one. This is my favorite, uh, but I have these others. And especially at this time of the year, I like to talk to you about that one year chronological one in case you really are trying to read every book, every word, and you want to start at Genesis 1-1, okay? So throwing that one out there and put that there. And then also the beginning of the year here, I've already talked to you about the year of Cozy, but I highly recommend this one. Now this is put out by Rodale. I think that's how you say it, R-O-D-A-L-E. It's a beautiful book. It's just a nice one to have to flip through. It also goes by the seasons, but I've already talked to you about this book. Um, they have recipes, they have uh, craft ideas, they have activity ideas. They're just fun. It's, a, it's just a beautiful book. It's a beautiful cover. I like to keep it right there on my shelf and have it like in, when I walk into the library, it's a book that I like to see. Um, so highly recommending that one. And then also seasonally here for January, I've talked to you about this book and I highly recommend it. It's the Snowflake Winter Secret Beauty. Um, I have reviewed and talked to you about this one, but let me find you a really good visual here. Here you go. The photography showing the um, snowflakes and then talking about the science of the snowflake. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So highly, highly recommend this one too. This is by, uh, the text is Kenneth Libricht, L-I-B-B-R-E-C-H-T. It'll be in the notes below. And the photography is by Patricia Ramusen. Um, so highly recommend those seasonal reads. All right, give me a minute. I'll move those and I'll get to the other book columns. All right, I lied. 
I have a couple more uh, seasonal ones that I want to go over with you. And these are also ones that fall into the category of uh, ones I have been recommending in my classroom. And that would be Gary Paulson. Uh, so in my classroom, in my high school freshman English classroom, I like to do first chapter Fridays. So at least a chapter every Friday, I like for them to sit back, relax, and let me read to them. They can't have AirPods in, they can't have their phones, they can't have their computer. They can draw, they can take notes, um, they can work on their journal, but they can't have any kind of technology and they just need to sit back and relax. They can put their head down if they want to. Um, I'm very non-judgy when it comes to first chapter Fridays, but I really like to just read to them a chapter out of something that they might not pick up on their own. Um, and then most of the time, most of the time, somebody will ask for that book at the end of the day. Uh, and that was the case with this. Last week, I did Gary, Pauls Gary Paulson's, win no, that's not true. Two weeks ago, I did Gary Paulson's Winter Dance. Last week, I did um, William Golding's Lord of the Flies because we had been kind of referencing it a couple of times and I just wanted them to hear how beautiful the descriptions were at the beginning of that book. But I did this two weeks ago uh, and then we had a little conversation on what the Iditarod is, when it runs, um, and that, and loved it. Um, I just love this book. So this is Gary Paulson's um, book, Winter Dance. It's one word, Winter Dance. The Fine Madness of Running the Iditarod. Um, so Gary Paulson is most known for Hatchet, his young adult middle grade um, uh, novel. Uh, it did not win the Newbery Award, but it got the Newbery Honor Award book. Uh, and it's a very popular. Most kids know Hatchet by the time they come to me, but they don't know that Gary Paulson also wrote books for adults. So in Winter Dance, he talks about the Iditarod, and it's such a good book to um, describe to them an opening scene, like how you tell a story to grab your reader's attention at the very beginning. So that's what Gary Paulson does. He talks about the time that he was running his dogs just to practice them and things went horribly, horribly wrong. Um, and then he goes back and tells you like what led up to that. And I think he ran it three times, but it's phenomenal. I love this book and it's a great time to read it. The Iditarod usually runs, I think the first weekend in March. Um, so maybe you want to put it on your March list, but I feel like right now it feels like the Iditarod here. Um, so I would highly recommend that. I have talked to you and I also would highly recommend Hatchet. We've talked about that book before. <coughs> uh, boys in middle school for sure need to read the book, but it's usually a book that most people like. It doesn't, you don't have to be in middle school to read it. And if somehow that book got past you and you never read it, it's a good one. It's a good short read. Um, I also like Gary Paulson's The Transall Saga. It's not as popular as Hatchet or even Winter Dance, but it's an interesting one. It has a bit of a supernatural aspect to it, uh, but wanted to mention that. And then in addition to Gary Paulson here, I highly recommend for the season, John Krakauer and both of his books that I have read, Into the Wild and Into Thin Air would be good ones, but Into Thin Air definitely feels a little seasonal um, because it is his personal account of climbing Mount Everest and then a disaster happened. John Krakauer is a um, journalist and he also did the Into the Wild where he followed the Chris McCandless story, the um, college college dropout who uh, you know burned all of his money, sold all of his belongings and hitchhiked to Alaska and then didn't make it. It did not go well. I'm not telling you anything that the front cover does not tell you, but I highly recommend this one. I know I've talked to you about it, um, but I've had that review out there for a long time. But then also Into Thin Air when he talks about his climbing of Mount um, Everest and the disaster that happened. So this is a really good seasonal one. Uh, and then on my to be read list by John Krakauer is Under the Banner of Heaven. Uh, I just have a hard time gearing myself up for this one because it's the story of a violent faith. On July 24th, 1984, a woman and her infant daughter were murdered by two brothers who believed they were ordered to kill by God. The roots of their crime lie deep in the history of an American religion practiced by millions. Um, that's hard for me to be like, yeah, I want to, I want to read that for some reason. I like to watch it. Like if this were a documentary, I would totally watch it. If it were a true crime, I would totally watch it, but to sit down and read it, got to gear myself up for that. But I need to do that. And I need to do it this year because I really like John Krakauer. All 
All right, now a couple of those book haul books, and that would be these three. Um, I borrowed both of these from my daughter-in-law, and I think I even had borrowed one before and then didn't read it yet, but they're Emily Henry, Happy Place, and Beach Read. She was reading Happy Place over the holidays when I was with her, so when she finished it, I brought it with me, and then I also have not read Beach Read, so this I also need to read. So both of those I borrowed. They're on my 2024. I will read them and get those back to her. I picked this one up in a little library, Happiness Falls um, by Angie Kim. It is the book of the month um, edition. This one says it was book of the month in August of 2023. My book of the month go up one more, like above here. These are my cozy mysteries. Up above that are my Agathas. And then the next one up, those are my book of the month club um, editions. And all of my, I'm not part of book of the month. I love it, but I don't, I have no business buying news or new books retail. So I get them thrifted or little libraries or exchanges. Um, but I have no business paying retail for a book. I have plenty of books that I should be reading, but this one looked really good. And I picked it up in a little library. Now, a couple of the books that I got in a book haul, I got as, or I got four gifts and I already gave them away at Christmas. So I'll tell you what those are, but I don't have copies of those. Um, but that would be the, uh, at half price books, I picked up Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell for Hunter, my future daughter-in-law, um, and for our niece who uh, is in fifth grade, Roller Girl Amulet, which is a graphic novel, um, Out From Boneville. She really likes the graphic novels, so that's what we tried to get her some of those. Out From Boneville, Babysitter's Club, The Truth About Stacy, um, and I feel like there's one more, but I don't see it on here. But we picked those up and gave those away as gifts, so I don't have a copy of those to show you. Um, I did want to say I picked up this, Better Homes and Gardens Holiday Crafts. This looks fun, like I needed one more magazine. I know, I'm a sucker, I love magazines. But I thought this one had some cool ideas in it that I might be able to use for my shoebox um, group. But it's $12.99, like they're starting to outprice me on these magazines, but I love them. Um, the other thing, and I don't have all of them, I need to add them, but I'll have to add them to the next one. But when we went to my husband's side of the family's extended family Christmas, um, his cousin's wife said, hey, I have a little something for you. And she gave me a bag and it had several books in it and then it had several magazines. This is the one that I've read already. I mean, like I read that weekend when, I, when she gave it to me. It's The Simple Things. I've not seen this particular magazine before, but it's the December edition. It says on the first day of Christmas. And it's just one of those glossy, lovely magazines. So I told her, like she definitely passed them off to the right person because I will devour them. I will give them all to my cousin Deb. She will love them. Um, uh, some of these I think my sister's gonna appreciate. So between the three of us, we will all love these magazines and get good life out of them. And then we'll put them in a free little library and pass them on. So um, this one looks super, super cool. Uh, and I read it that weekend and I really liked it. The graphics are just, they're just lovely. I don't even know how else to say how lovely those are. But um, thank you, Emily, if you're watching, you gave them to the right person. We will get two, three, and four times the love out of those magazines. Uh, for my book club, I picked up a couple of books that um, we have on my book club list at Half Price Books. Let me grab those. scare me. I got the Radcliffe Ladies Reading Club by Julia Bryan Thomas. We're doing this for my book club in the next couple of months. And then we're also doing um, the One Italian Summer by Rebecca Surley. And this is the Book of the Month Club. Both of these I picked up at Half Price Books. I think I've got a receipt for you here. One Italian Summer. Um, I did pay more than I normally do for that because it's for Book Club $13.49. And then Radcliffe Ladies Reading, that one was eight forty nine. Um, what was the other? Ah, I think I must have bought this for um, Hunter. I can't remember buying it for, but it does. It says I purchased that one thirteen forty nine. So this was 
Yep, this is over that Thanksgiving break. We went to have Christ books. We were looking for the Colleen Hoover Hopeless series. She has the first one in that series, but we've had a hard time picking those up secondhand. But then she picked this one up and I threw it in with mine. So uh, once again, this one we paid $13.49 or $13 for that too, which again, that's not bad. I mean, it is half price. It's half off that cover price. Um, but I look forward to reading that one. Or I look forward to reading all of those, the other ones that are for my book club. All right. Now, I don't think I have all of the bookish gifts that I got for Christmas, like right here to show you some of them. I will show you, uh, you know, the t-shirts, like when I am wearing them, I will show you. But um, I got this really cool bookmark from my sister, and I'll try and insert the picture with the company that it came from. But she bought it at a local market here um, in Cincinnati. But it's really cool because it's a flower, and then it's got the leaf on the bottom. So I've been using that in the planner that I'm using this year, which is a Hobonichi Teco 2024 Cousin. Um, and I showed you this little corner bookmark that I bought at a market um, here in Cincinnati back in December. And I just, I love how that fits right there on the front. But I've been using this in here um, as one of my bookmarks. And I don't know if you're a planner person, but I am loving this Techno Cousin, Teco, Teco Cousin. Um, I really, really like it. It's working for me. It has day pages um, and I've enjoyed tracking things on those day pages. Um, and then here's the icebreaker I was telling you about. <laughs> so spicy. So 20 something. And then again, my high schoolers are reading it. Um, but there it is. Like, here we have it. I am enjoying it. It's a good one. It's just a little raunchier than I like. Uh, my sister also got me this bookmark. You can fill in the titles of the books that you've been reading. And it has the stamp on the back of it. It's got hashtag the 14 books challenge, and then it's got copyright Emily Cooper creation. So that's where that one's from. I can show you that one, uh, but I have been using that one to mark my place uh, in the current book that I'm reading and then tracking those books. So that's super cool. Um, my sister also got me a t-shirt from the Naughty Dog bookstore, um, and that is my favorite independent bookstore. It's in Little Nashville, Indiana. She got me the Pippi Post, the week quote, the daily book um, week quote that I showed you earlier. Ah, the uh, flower, crocheted flower one is from Anna Chi Chi Shop, bookmark. One of my former students, she's a senior this year, but she um, came and gave me a bookmark for Christmas also. And it's a metal bookmark and um, I could not be more touched. It says, thank you for being part of my story. And I mean, I just love her. I love her. I loved her as a freshman when she was my student. You know how sometimes, you know, if you work with um, students, if you work with, with kids, sometimes you just know. You know when they're your student that you will be lifelong friends. That is Anna Lee. Um, I enjoyed her when she was my student and she has continued to stop by and share her story with me, ask me for advice. I've helped her. I've filled out recommendations. Um, and I just, I look forward to watching her grow up. It's so, so fun. Now, that being said, I'm using that bookmark in this book that I'm currently reading, which is Jack London. This one says The Call of the Wild and White Fang. It has both of them in there, but I'm reading White Fang. It's the first story, um, and it looks like it goes to about right here, and then the rest of it's Call of the Wild. So Call of the Wild might be like a short story, looks like, but I can't say enough. <laughs> And it shocks me as much as anybody. I cannot say enough how much I love the story White Fang and how I wish I had read this 30 years ago. Like I know when I was probably in high school or even middle school that we read excerpts from White Fang, maybe Call of the Wild, whatever it was, I didn't appreciate it. Like I, I did it. I am telling you, read White Fang. It is so good on so many levels. You can read it just for an adventure, no problem. You can read it because you want to read about wild wolves. You want you can read it because you want to read about sled dogs. But it is such a good story. The writing is phenomenal. I know it's a classic for a reason. I mean, it's a classic and it's a classic for a reason. I know. 
but I'm telling you, I love it. It's going to be a five-star read for me. I am probably going to have to make my husband listen to the audio when we're traveling, um, and he does not do books, but I just think he would appreciate the telling of this story. Um, it's so lovely. Please read White Fang by, <laughs> by Jack London, but I'm currently reading it. Haven't finished it. It's in my to be read stack over here or my currently reading, not to be read. I am reading it. I'm almost finished. I'm trying to slow myself down because I'm using it as my example for my kids. They do independent reads and they do book projects and things with it. Um, and so that's the one I'm doing this quarter. We're only two weeks in the quarter and I'm going to finish it. So, um, I'm trying to slow down a little bit, but it's hard. I really, really love it. Uh, my sister-in-law got me a shirt, um, a bookish shirt for Christmas. I'll be wearing that one. It says I closed my book for this t-shirt. I've already worn it to school. Um, I closed my book for this and it's a t-shirt. That's what I'm trying to say. My uh, in-laws bought me a book press. I think I have that right here. It's really hard to come across like I'll try and insert a picture, but it's really hard for this to, for me to like show you what this is. But um, you put the page in there, like the title page and you press down and it says um, property of DeShannon Lovins uh, library, I think is what it, what it reads. But I love it. I've been, you know, every time I pick up a book, I've been putting the book press on it. But um, I highly recommend this. I think I put the um, product name in the notes, but it says Ideal Seal is the product name, so the brand name. Um, highly recommend that. What I love it, love it. All right, I am stopping there because I'm an hour and 14 minutes, and I want this one to be a little bit shorter than they have been, so I'll edit this up. Um, and then I hope to come back to you soon with more books that I've been recommending in my classroom and catch you up on some of those. And then I feel like some of those are going to be so much longer that maybe this year I'm going to just pull them out a little bit more instead of having like two hour videos. So thank you. Thank you for joining me. It's a Thursday night in South or South Southeastern Ohio, I guess is what we're called. Um, I'm out in the middle of nowhere, uh, but welcome to my library. I hope that this year you stick with me um, for those seasonal reads. Every time I do a video, I will try and get them ahead of time even to you, but plan your year of reading out. I hope to add to your TBR list, and I hope you add to mine. So tell me what you're reading. Tell me what you want to read. Let me know if you're looking for something in particular. Comment below what you're currently reading. I love to know what other people are reading. Um, let me know if you've read any of the books that I've talked about, or if you have suggestions from when I tell you, like, I love White Fang, what else should I be reading? Or I love Winter Dance, what else should I be reading? Um, I think that Icebreaker is too spicy. What might I not like so much? <laughs> Whatever, right? Um, but throwing those out there, and I will be back to talk with you soon. As always, I'm happy to be your friendly librarian. All of the books that I've talked about, you can get for free at your public library. You can uh, download the Libby app and get the ebooks or the audio books. Uh, you can pick them up at Thrift, or you can go to an independent bookstore and pick them up, or uh, a famous bookstore. You can get them from Amazon. You can get them from Barnes & Noble. We are a no-judgment area right here. Let's be social. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Twitter, all of the um, social media platforms. I have most of the um, information for those below. And like I said, if you didn't catch my TikTok video where I went over my 2023 review shelf, it's very fast, but I hope that you enjoy it. Thanks for spending the evening with me, folks.